Off a day, everyone. Thank you for being here today. The Committee on Culture and Justice is now called to order. It's Monday, October 29, and it is 2.02, 2.03 p.m. Notices for this public hearing were disseminated via email to all senators and all main media broadcasting outlets on October 22, 2018, and again on October 26. The notice was also published in the Guam Daily Post on October 22. We have three agenda items today. Um, one is Bill Number 344-34, as introduced by Therese Lahi, an act to add a new Chapter 51 to Title 15 of Guam Code Annotated relative to expediting distribution of Guam World War II claims to awardees who die before receiving the award. The second item is Bill Number 346-34, also introduced by Therese Terlahi, an act to establish the Inetnan Estudian i Umali'i Zen Umafan Pana Itautau Hizung, Zentautau Tanu Commission, to promote Guam's participation and Chamor representation in the commemoration of the 500th anniversary of the arrival of Ferdinand Magellan to Guam and the Mariana Islands. The third item on our agenda today is the appointment of Dr. Michael Bivacqua to serve as a member of the Council on the Arts and Humanities Agency, CAHA. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of uh, my Vice Chair, Senator Talina Nelson, at this hearing today. All right. <clears throat> so we will begin with the, uh, the first item, Bill Number 344-34. Um, oh, I'm sorry. If it's okay, we're going to start with an, an, the other bill because there are some people here who have time constraints who want to testify on that bill. So. Uh, I apologize. We will begin with the uh, testimony on bill number 346-34. All right, so regarding this bill, I'd like to ask those who signed in to testify to please uh, come forward and have a seat and I will uh, introduce the bill. In the year, the year 2021 will mark the 500th anniversary of the first circumnavigation of the Earth initiated by Ferdinand Magellan, which includes his stopover to Guam and the Mariana Islands in March 1521. The government of Spain will host a number of international commemorative events, including a retracing of the voyage, conferences, exhibits, and other programs. Bill number 346 will establish a provisional commission which will be dedicated to overseeing Guam's participation during the 500th anniversary of the circumnavigation. Former University of Guam President Robert Underwood began discussions with the Spanish government representatives from several agencies and was informed that plans may include a stop on Guam by the Spanish Navy, which will be co coordinated with the United States Navy. The commission will include representatives from the office of the governor, the Guam Legislature, the Department of Chamorro Affairs, the Guam Museum, the Commission of Finat Chamorro, the Finat Naguin Historian, the Linat La Tautautanu, the University of Guam, the Guam Preservation Trust, the Guam Visitors Bureau, and various local cultural and historical organizations. The group will help ensure that the people of Guam have an opportunity to share our unique view of the first encounter between Pacific Islanders and Westerners in this region. We'll now accept testimony, and if we could begin with Dr. Underwood, please begin. Mm. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you very much, Senator Terlahi. And if uh, you will allow me, I have a, you know, not a real long statement, but I want to read the statement in uh, please. Yes. in uh, in uh, tomorrow. When I start this, Senator Terlahi, Senator Nelson, members of committee, and Mangai Gipago, and others, I want to distinguish the officials and members of the public. Ma tu zuguini na haani para be testigo po di laini ma propoponi a numero 346. Iginagawin niya isti na legislasyon i para o maestablesi un komisyon o sino inet nun istudion i umali i dan umafana i tautauhidzong dan tautautano. So men na magofisti na haani sa matu i ora ane para ta insima i hinasota i eksperienciata Gi okasyon ifinatun magadzanes gwini gi tano guahan gi 1521. Sinafana dinida, mege siyaman malofan gwini po di finatonya 
ni ti bonito, ni chat pago, ni desonrao para ita o tautano. Gi mismo tiempo, jan sen hafana dinida, me ge sea fuet san lenguaje, fuet san tiningo, fuet san hinengi, jan fuet san fuetza, ma dogo magi, jan imajuria esta, ta quequinta, isticia como pati, gi tiningota, jan kenen prendeta, por hafa sia, fundamentonia isti, y manchamoro. Y dos mil veintiuno nasakan, siempre humanota, formar conchinisti, dan con menagos y tetsu magazanes, ane halilikui, interro y et mundo. Y dos mil veintiuno, siempre malofan quinientos, quinientos años, desde Efenatonia Mage, dan y marino en español, siha. Que me lo funciona el ciclo, me celebra y te su magazanes de la honra que me gusta de una manera y fin a todo el mago y pacífico. Vajana más sanga no ha descubrido lo tarde que viene ni me la 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 pago en el momento o me acepta este naginazo. Lo que como es que le gana tarde que viene ya que viene tarde me lo funciona que viene después de todo el que me viene afecta. Y te tu y Josuita na mamale. Y que nalam tiene economía entre Manila y Acapulco, que va con español. Y el león católico. Y na antasia, tal como Camacho, Pérez, Santos, Cruz. Y palabra, si ha gane ni fino español, ni esta buente 40% que ha lo mi fino chamuro. Tatungo na itauto guajan, que isla en Pacífico, finetna, una experiencia y peste que en Europa, y guerra que en Sendalo en Europa, y colonización que en Europa. Me que se llaman más sucede desde ahora a Neymatos y Magallanes, ya que si te tutujan su manga ni historiata, siempre me lo hacen una oportunidad para que me aclaro ya que hagan la manga que ya y te autotano Guinea, Gitaguaja. Pues es un asumen importante este en la ocasión para ta usa y finato en magazanes para ta na matungo hadrihet de ni fina posta. Siempre ta chuli este en el momento para ta celebran maizaje, para ta estudian maizaje, para ta extendi y capacidad ta de toda manera, para ta tungo y fina lofan y tautautano. Para que todo esté con dignidad, con respeto, con que no tenga un estudio, si ha, a gente por si no tenga. Usted no agradece y se toma por este asunto, senadora. Se puede ha, se consigue este mona y el espíritu ni no comprende ya no matamos. This is a singular opportunity for us to make known the experiences of the Chamorro people uh, in a way that has not been done in the, in the succeeding 500 years. So this is the opportunity to do so with dignity and with intelligence, and I thank you for the opportunity to make that possible here in Guam. Thank you. Thank you, and I want to recognize that the idea for this bill really was at the impetus of the Guam, at University of Guam and their efforts in, in uh, discussing these uh, issues with Spain and discovering their plans for the 500th anniversary. So I want to thank you. Thank you for that. And if you could just uh, hold on a minute in case we have questions. Uh, and Dr. Selman, please proceed. Yes, thank you very much for this opportunity to provide testimony. Um, I agree with uh, what Dr. Underwood is saying. The 500-year commemoration of the Magellan circumnavigation is an important event to highlight the ongoing issues concerning the political status of Guam and the preservation of Chamorro culture. The anniversary provides an important opportunity to celebrate Chamorro culture and the current concerns and issues with the preservation of the Chamorro language and improving our political status. My concern is that the focus should not be on the person of Magellan as the so-called great man who made it happen, I would suggest that the focus be on the teamwork of his crew that made the circumnavigation possible. Many people do not realize that Magellan himself did not return to Spain and was killed in the Philippines. 
It was the teamwork of the crew that made the circumnavigation possible. The historic event began the sustained early globalization of European commerce, and it made Spanish imperialism possible. The early period of European globalization from 1492 to 1700 brought disease, strife, conflict, and colonialism to many other cultures of the world. Many peoples, their languages and cultures were devastated by that colonialism, commerce, invasion, violence, and conversion by the sword. My suggestion is that the celebration needs to be shifted away from the person of Magellan and used to promote the ongoing struggle and survival of the Chamorro, Filipino, Marshallese, Ponapean, Chukis, Yapis, and Palawan peoples, their languages, and their cultures. First and foremost, the government of Guam should support events that advance the ongoing plight to improve the political status of Guam. The event should highlight the value of sustaining Chamorro culture and language. Because a large portion of the population of Guam are Filipino and Spanish colonialism had devastating effects on their languages and cultures, I propose that the celebration events on Guam should include recognition of the ongoing Filipino struggle in the face of the past and current globalization and its effects on the people of Micronesia need to be promoted in the sponsored events. The event should be multicultural and inclusive. Thank you for this opportunity to voice my concerns. Thank you very much, Dr. Selman, and thank you for your um, written testimony also. Appreciate that. Um, would you like to testify? I, I know you're from Mark, right? Yes. Doctor, uh, yeah. I am Dr. Omira Perry? Oh, yeah. Brunal Perry. Brunal yes. Perry. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I came here to support these. Can you, can you bring the microphone closer? Make okay. it very loud. Yeah. yeah. I would like to support the bill. This bill is an open dialogue for um, the people of the Guam to engage in conversation with the uh, other nations that are affect, were affected by the contact. Um, this forum, international forum, is to promote global understanding and peace among the nations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who wanted to testify on this bill? I'd, li I'd like to recognize the president of, presence of the president of the University of Guam. Thank you for being here. All right. Mr. Roberts? Okay, so, oh. Um, Miguel? Well, could you hold on one minute? Did you have any questions for this panel, Senator? All right, okay. Okay, please proceed. Okay, Sidus Masi. Okay. Um Sidus Masi. Um Malaga Zunabe in uh Song Infinite Nana who who go support the ST, uh Zahu who go for Gradesina Ibidanya si Robert Underwood Nai and I had to two and Esti Nakin Lampton, the Malago Zunabe uh Sangani Inuebun president in Unibet Sarat Guahan Lokwe si Thomas Christ, Sidus Masi sa ha ha keke continu continua Zuna Kina Lampton. And so um in terms of my support for this, um, if we look at the, the world of countries today and analyze the various relationships that former colonies have with their former colonizers, we would find the diversity of possibilities. We might assume that since colonialism was based on various forms of exploitation and violence that these relationships would certainly be tense, but it is far more complicated than that. In some cases, we see close cooperation and intimate interaction where those who stood on two sides of a war are now allied over shared causes. Usually these continued interactions take the economic forms. There's preferences for immigration, there's developmental programs. Um, sometimes these connections are neo-colonial attempts to ensure that states which became independent remain stuck in a similar relationship to their former colonizers. Sometimes the relationships can be more antagonistic some countries continue to seek reparations from their former colonizers. Um, there's a strong movement, but because it is in the Caribbean, 
between allied independent states in the Caribbean to get reparations from Spain and Portugal for the slave trade there. Now, almost all of these, um, interestingly enough, a lot of those formerly colonized places now look to defeating their former colonizers in sporting events, because that's usually the only way that they can get back or strike back at their former colonizers. Um, ultimately, however, there is some type of post-colonial conversation. Uh, there's a policy framework for establishing a relationship between those who forged and those who are once tightly held by those colonial chains. Now, in Guam, we've missed that conversation in many ways around our potential connections to Spain. Like many other uh, former colonial powers, Spain enjoys a fair amount of imperial nostalgia or desire to capture in some way their former days of glory. This can result in some feelings of obligation to their former possessions, which can manifest in terms of foreign aid, cultural preservation programs, other types of investment. Um, and in the past, there has been some attempts to access those. But one of the reasons why Guam has had difficulty accessing those is because of its political status. The primary reason, as I just stated, is the mispotential in a lot of ways is Guam's political status. There have been some minute cultural cooperation efforts between Spain and Guam and other places in Micronesia um, in the past. But any real connections about Guam to face, as the, sort of as the, as the title of the bill states it, umafana, for Guam to face its former colonizer in some way, has to always go through the United States. And so, um, for example, earlier this year I attended a conference where the conversation around this 500-year anniversary was getting started. It was run by the, US, by the Spanish Navy. And everybody I talked to, once they learned that I was from Guam, then they paused and said, do we need to involve the, your, your State Department in this? Is it okay for us to talk directly? And usually they tended to, to err on the side of caution. And, and it was difficult to actually communicate with a lot of the government officials, feeling that they didn't want to overstep their bounds. And so... So, okay, now looking to the future. One of the reasons why I think that something like this will be very important is because of the way in which the Guam will receive a lot of international attention by being one of the sites that gets stopped to by the circumnavigation. It'll also be a lot of intellectual attention as well. And so it'll be important for Guam, for the University of Guam to sort of capitalize on that moment. But even looking into the future, um, one of the biggest allies that formerly colonized places have oftentimes are their former colonizers. And so if sort of in, a, in sincere efforts uh, at self-determination, opening up a dialogue with a place like Spain, which is part of the European Union and trying to develop allies in terms of pushing for the United States to faithfully take on self-determination or decolonization for Guam would be very, very important. And so even in terms of there's the short-term sort of benefits, but the longer-term one of developing a relationship with Spain would be very, very important. And so for all those reasons, I definitely support this bill. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Could I just ask Dr. Underwood a question? If, is the, um, when, when Dr. Selman proposed that we should include uh, other cultures or other islands, are, will, those, will Spain be including those other islands uh, independent of what we do here on Guam? Uh, I, I don't believe so, but I, that remains an open question. I think the, um, that should be addressed by the commission itself, and uh, the commission itself may suggest that. Uh, I, I think those ideas are, are good ones. But of course, the actual circumnavigation uh, didn't include those islands. Uh, of course, those islands became affected uh, much later on, but uh, the the, the notion that uh, we're focusing on the colonial encounter is something that, of course, is replicated uh, throughout the Pacific, but in this particular case, that first colonial encounter occurred here. And uh, that's why this is uh, an, an opportunity to demonstrate, I believe, a great deal of pride in who we are, to say that uh, we, we've survived, we're, we've got issues, but we've survived that. And that's, and that's a pretty significant uh, uh, statement. Uh, and I, I believe that uh, uh, that should be taken up by the commission. I think, I think the commission is, appears to be diverse enough the way it's structured so that it could address many issues. 
All right. I know that Dr. Selman had some time obligations. Did, does Senator Nelson, did you have any questions for uh, Dr. Selman before he has to? Uh, not, not for Dr. Selman, but just a general question. And I'll, okay. So do you want me to wait? I'll, I'll wait till the end. It seems like. All right, thank you. So, uh, Howard, Mr. Hemsing. Half a day. Electrical. Uh, I can understand. Comprende alpha bit in miso. Law. Kopugwa hundreds in a segment. Pali ni boti. The Taza Simizelenas Li Tanu Ali hundreds of Latin cells coming at a speed of over twenty nine miles and turning like on a spot on a dime with requiring no tacking. Then they followed the cells between two can two cliff sides on both sides, right and left, turn you know. They didn't find the island, and then they not only not found the island, they saw the cells. We found Magellan. Not, they not only did that, they also brought in their disease, and they were starving. They were eating rats and leather. And then, because of the priest being the commander, the head man in charge, for he is the learned man, he ordered the soldiers from the boat to kidnap seven young robust men so they can eat the innards to acquire their health and strength. So did Magellan discover Guam or did we discover him out in the ocean? And what happened after that? And then he also calls this island Island Ladonis, Island of Thieves. We saved his life, but, and then, you know, but, si mazelan na, tapuafa na, pumap, esta matutun mapunit, pues maaganit, islan ladonis, hita man at lot, lay na si eza man mamatay. Talo si o kamprende alfa, masotsogi na isa ungan na magayit na, atsogi, right? Mono Zunga Mapus Law is on your route now, Spice Islands. Press Eli Guigan in the Popo, like now, near Tired Bidon Mian, I see the Gospel, 1565, near Lenya, this land is now sovereign to the Queen of Spain. That's a total illegal act. Because under the Popo decree, it states right there that the natives, the indigenous, must request for the either Portugal or Spain to be the governing government in their islands. Please, can you please rule over us because we are incapable of ruling ourselves? They never did that. None of your ancestors ever said that to the Spanish. Now in this committee, uh, you know, you, you guys crack me up now, because you guys are a whole bunch of proud chamoes, and yet you don't even speak your language in, in these things, and you don't even understand when somebody talks, when someone uses the language. And yet you're not going to allow people like me from this island to participate as a member in this? I already see that a lot of people in Guam are not qualified, but they are qualified in their hearts. They're not qualified in this. So how are you going to get a fair and just? And then we're used to Guam. Retaliation, the party system, you know, all of that. We're used to that in Guam. That's why nothing gets accomplished, just like the native fishing rights. Where is it for us? Nothing is done right for us. And you guys are the ones that are subject of making it happen. But yet... When it comes to getting the right people involved, you, you don't allow it. But you hear this, oh, we have to do it, it's very important. 
a proud Samoru. Where, but where is it? Because I know what's going to happen here. You're going to say, oh, how proud we are. Magellan's great self of discovering our island and introducing us to the world. But you forgot that we already knew the world prior to Magellan. See, there's your history. Did you know that we navigated the, the world already before Magellan, they, before he was even born, <laughs> even before Columbus? We already were sailing the world. That's your ancestor's history. Do we know any of that? Are we taught any of that? This is what we need to check. Yeah, I understand getting involved, participation, because yes, Magellan came here. But are you going to chikundagan and be so, oh, yeah, oh, Mr. thank Hansen. you very much. Right. You know? No, if I may in just interrupt just for just I one second. Yeah, I, I appreciate I, I your agree. testimony. I know it's going to happen. No, I don't think I so. I understand. Because this, the whole intent of the bill is to make sure that we have a say in how they're going to interpret Magellan's landing on Guam. That's the whole purpose. And if we do it wrong, then we do it wrong. But if we have an opportunity here to do it right. So that's what I'm hoping we're going to get your help with. I don't trust you. There's a whole list of... I don't uh, trust you guys. Well, there's a whole <laughs> list of people that are involved, and maybe you can trust one of them. I'm going to read the list of the people who will be involved in this commission, just so that the public is, is aware. There will be one representative of the Department of Chamorro Affairs, appointed by the Department of Chamorro Affairs president. Ah, no, One I representative the, of the Guam Museum appointed by the Ay, COSAS uh, board. Uh, uh, no, to do well, I just want the public to hear that like, you're uh, accusing us of... Mungi, mungi ni Curzon, ni Tumungulo, kaya. Zapura, sis, yeah. Degree holders, resume builders. No, there is no requirement here of degree holders, I'm telling you. So who they're going to appoint? There's, uh, there's two people from scholars from the University of Guam. But all the rest are appointed by... One's by the governor, one's by the legislature, one is by, one is a representative of the Guam Preservation Trust, the Guam Visitors Bureau, the... Um, you know, back in 1995, I did the uh, tricentennial commemoration of tomorrow's colonization. I, I chaired that at UOG. My biggest headache out of all of what I've done was government of Guam. What was the last part? The tricentennial commemoration of Chamorro's colonization, 1695 to 1995. My biggest obstacle in getting things done and getting it recognized, because the importance behind it, because the, we lost to the Spanish in 1695, mm -hmm. and that's when the population was all brought into Guam, where it was below 4,000, from a rough estimate of over 300,000. My biggest obstacle was government of Guam. So how can I trust government of Guam? Please explain that to me. You guys are the first line of defense for us, but we can't trust you. We can't depend on you. I mean, I understand. I, 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 it, you, we need participation here. I agree with that. But because of past actions of government of Guam, I don't trust government of Guam. The Puratsi Kundagan. Thank you. Sit just it. Okay, we are, um, hopefully we can remedy that. We are going to continue to work on it. But, um, all right, if there's no other testimony, then, uh, Senator? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Garrido, right? Uh, buenas, buenas, uh, Vicente Garrido. So, comprendía todo este navío por la intención de la fana malagona por la formación comisión. Lo, pues, a partir más como el clima de que en matos de 500 aniversario. Pada tapan azuk, pada tapan gupur. 
if the anniversary come up, are we going to have a fiesta or dance or something like that when this thing come up? Ngan? That's going to be decided by the commission, hopefully. Oh, okay. that's, what the, the test, that's what everybody wants, is to make sure that it's not a celebration of his discovering us and that we can frame it in, in a way that's much more appropriate for Guam. So, so it's not necessary that it's a celebration for the arrival of our colonial master? Correct. Okay. That's what our hope is with this commission. I was hoping really for a long time ago that the Spanish government would not apologize for calling us uh, Island of Thieves, the Mansakit. The man McCallan, he said, I love that word colonize. I always say on the radio, Guahu di Makalanisa na Tsamoro. Guahu. Por guahu di para matungo o maho si fai ito, right? Dalekta o comprendia e intención guini siya. O comprendia. Loti zahu do na palabras e in an on studio on the office of Mali, Mali, then Mafana, it out of Hizung, then it out of Tano. A quarter tomorrow, a former one, the antenna, not a discrubery, it out of Hizung, the man Matuk is Lotta, Saint Pilmation. The game in Gekko, now, those are Megana, my Usano Guinea, historian. Kada masangal nga Magellan discovered Guam. Ano? Lo Guam mangaygita, mangaygita. It's a moro da tungas si Doctor Nawari, no, no, Doc. Da para tapan ma discovered. Lo talaga kaya na tempo na ling niya kung man ma recognition na man tau 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 nuin. Talaga. Ekwa, siapa gaya kita finalingwa ini atau tauzan ni ada lengan aman mar recognition, aman tau 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 ni sama mar man gos hunggi nesti respect tu. Lain man mau tu sti nak kalau sini tau tau gue, ay, man tai respect tu ini kita lata. Tauzan respect tu niya. Jual ini setapa, buti man man apa pelajaris. They have no respect to our island. That's why to this day, the Spanish government never apologized for what, for the kind of remarks that Magellan said. They even put it on the map, Islas de Ladrones. That's an insult for the Tsamoru people. But the respect for the Tordu, the Ola, the Suma sesfu todo estilo o fili na tauza o guaman hasu que contra este na comisión na po farmacia monumento por si magellan. I hope that whatever they can do and they're successful to do some research on this. In my own coming from my heart, I hope that there nobody will ever come up and suggest that we build a monument. Of Magellan on our island. Thank you so much. Um, any questions, Senator? All right. Um, I'd like to thank the panel. I think we have one more person signed up for to for testimony, Mr. Laguanya. Is this for this bill? Yeah. Um, before he begins, I'd just like to read off that we also have received written testimony from Dr. David Atienza, Associate Professor in Anthropology and Micronesian Studies in support of the bill, Dr. Michael Clement, Associate Professor of History and Micronesian Studies in support of the bill, and Dr. Uh, former Senator Hope Cristobal. Please begin. Saya nampu tanti na pay begai gi pau ke perestina, na prini poni, na me songana na tiu support ti esti, 
Estina Library Niponi, Tres Quatru Sais Dolan Trentai Quatru. Sigun Kihiningoku Na Paraguay in Studia, Pudesti Estina Studia in Studia Tai Taiasti Stalalalalahu Santong Ava. Ane mo skwela zo na gi gi high school, mamanda na para un onyo na pata studies ti history. Zagi ne ne zo kada dia malumo si hoksu fana ne zo bestrok kikwesta malif fazo. Lo kada malumo gi zo na class imbaba eno na leblu. Za zo itinay tay mommy za ni hiningog mommy imapuno mommy. Ima puno, ima nai nata. Kada dia, le kwa fasti makikito wini wao. Sa, mamanda na patatuli, isti na klas, na patababa, sta utumu abu bababas di na leblu. Sa kumuin, taitai ano maniluhu, taitai isti na leblu. Sa kumutin tataitai, tiuntungu gini mamano. Zan hafa mabidota, Nia no siya na tautawis. Manama si iman tautawta. Kada ma... Gubit no, tibay usa mga kaloy. Gubit no ni Spanyol. Umalum kita tanota. Et zigi finene na bidon niya. Ha puno todo iman lodo na lalahi. Man marip todo iman malaan. Man masonggi todo iman niya. Mamatsuli todi itin ginahan niya. Onyo, put onyo, put onyo. Pwes guahu, dia, put dia, put dia. Pabe huhungo ken no. Edza, bedadana di mestra sigaw, mistorya. Ipude mapunota. De kunapara. Talalaw law ho. Ini kita nak fumi finuzo pagu, sa hoku kita finotas tak? Mandadang kulo ifa magonta, tapi matungu lingwahin niya. Todi palabras niya tantu hita kita finota, pura Spanyol finota. Preba, tanah palabra palabra niya talo no, fabot. Niengai ano preba dan fabot esti. Gracias a Dios. Tata na ano luki. Gracias a Dios. Na magtuzo do gata desti. Kala nesa kena man falofan. Tati o gata. Sa nyo taytay i malofan mi na tres esti na piniponi. Lo man afot na. Man aigwi todi man iluhu. Ifinene na ni matugi alam ilugu ni. Si difuntu ed beneventi. Anesa ngangan yo put si hurao. Lasti mah gaya gaya ini mau gi, imahin ya, imah, dos na imahin. Ima punonya mau tu di luarnya, zaman zuti husung kita si. Eku aku di nancius esta ti jawa mungu kerja mestra gi. Tak kekian ala ala isakman, tak kekian ala ala ifinota. Wes petat, au onrah, petat fanis tablisa, komision. Ni para o kinalam tini ima abiba sa nang celebration ima punota dale. Sta man dogo man ilu spensa man ilu lo. Taginya o spensa o gipubliko lo. Tagi ni na yung tin tingo patin tay tay ihistoryata tiun senti gitagi ni na manera. Mano na do mangkulo sa tiu tiu tungo ifinoho. Esta kiu miskwela do. Dau tunggu, saya gini netzu, ini studiahu, gifinota, nama laknus todu, ihagahu, itu nengahu, saya nafkah mana pada ia juda iman tau tahu, ia juga i storya put storya, saya nengok todu sti, hamzu saya ni man menhalum, lo usah imenen halum miju. Para un libri, iman tau-tau mo. Gidi nansi na manera. 
para um fan estabeleça a comissão, para um fan apasiste já por fan estuda, por ir a fama de data, é de que uma de data e uma por nota, é de saber bem, se já o meu fizesse, da zangi malago o meu estuda, estuda este na leblu, se disse é de taza no baba no sa kado atan isti na leblu na man na ba na anuk talu kado baba isti at suut ikurason no dan ita tau tau stal bobong bong kurason no una na storya gini una zahu gini anay duro ma usitani i espanyol man nagmo i man tau tau ta man molik man nagmo Pues, lumiu papa tercago gua dah kahula gimana ni Spanyol dah amut ni pakinya. Pes tu munuk talo papa gihanom. Pes tu mogi gilo atsu. Kau kau tu mogi. Pes tu magi gini ni kenanya. Anak nana ipaki gih. Patah dos patah senyak gini. Saya dulu cakap seleknya. Ma puna atsu talo natau to. Duru Rumion, apa nuni na? Sinya mama baba. Uli lihat tahu ni mana tahu tahu gini na? Kalau nanti lagi nia, pagi tahu sih lagu anda tinggal nia. Logi mana guys? Angin pata onra isti na tahu tahu, dan ini mabidannya tahu di mana tahu tahu nia. Latih no. Kumu di sini n. Pegang lagi alam milumu, hadzi ya dia mesti hadzi sti, pofan establisha, grupu, para u sanganit ni storyata jadi mana tunggu iman famagonta ni maponota, na para, satu jauh na para iman nyeta jadi iman nyetuhu. O kahulo do mahungok talo na. Basta do fakwa gwini. Do ti bebe ang fangako dispensasyon gini. Sa asensu uto esti i historiata. Gini pago naman famagunta, pago man na afinu inglesa. Duro man afana. Man na afinu inglatera. Gigi gua talu tu nasti parewas ti na hinasu, i liberation, liberation day. Apa nanti sini ada talu Madzellan day, pata onra talu no. Debi di tanah para no, tanah para sini dora. Put fabot nasti na para no na hinasu, pata fama kalunisa ti tanosta pes tanah nai fama gonta ni mamaila. Pomali, mat mapunota, mat taytay, jo masilelebra na guaha komite ni ma establisha po in studia, ima funasta, ima funasta gini kita nota, jan gino timrianas. Ito pa besongan na du, tana ju disapreba, om besed no, na palabra, tana si sebi. I palabran niya. Support ti. Tatalo. Ti hu support ti. Ti hu apreba. Ti fabot. Asa finut sa moro pares ti. Tadza palabrasta. Munga ha. Munga. Edigi. Na para. Sa musesedi. Uto ta. Puno. Mungkin ni punu tajak, fana punu ta antis mana apa maulik tahu di mana luta antis. Kumun studia ilinguahi, ifinota, zon li, isinentin itinanga, para tafan lala, untungu gini mama nuhu, untungu gini mama nuhu tahu di mana nasion, iman mana luta, seta mana hana mau testa, siat, si cards. Di fontangnya, ni siapa? Ni siapa mang Guerrero? 
Yenisha, who o onra. Lui Hazi mo proponist it to ta onra talu. Palabran Spaniel ta taluna. O cook stuff in ota, manilu. Van mag. Si J. Pasqua, a jiggy Pasqua, and a lomale zelegna. Fak mata. Do una nazi fak mata. Angin para todo dit. Fan mag mata. Fan mag mata manilu. The man I now talk to Guam. Molikano na fakpuno Robert. Wow tumu. Lo. Ti bebe fangaga dispensation talo. Sa ti put tumay respetuzo. Lo pidiyo sa sangan iminagahit. U sa sangan i hafa mabidata. Sa zangen comfort mo na para on support ti don tonic esti. Lazi hina non nota. Lazi hina non non nia isakman. Lastima ta stutu dia isakman. Lastima ta stutu dia ifinota. Pues, para ta abiba, ta pata silebra, silebra, pata guputi. Quinientos años Nai matu si Magellan fino e netu sustiam pari dale o sta zebe na fakpa ga no sa utungan sta manananga lo spotis ti celuta ti mafati ora sta a mafati ora spotia be na holma ga no gisti tugu ta spotia celu pues ena lai a senadora por favor Ang ginafa utsuod gini, sasangan gini ni binebungbung kurasyon mo. Si Diyos Masi. Si Diyos Masi. All right. Well, I want to assure you that the bill was written very carefully to try to make sure that it's very clear to everyone that no one intends a celebration, that we intend that, well, we don't intend. Spain intends to celebrate. Spain intends to bring their navy here and re-enact the landing, or I don't know what they're going to do. We don't know exactly what they're going to do. They're going to come here. The United States Navy may be involved in that. What we are trying to do is only what is within our power to do, and that's to establish a commission on Guam that is going to be able to say for Guam exactly what you have said. And we, I'm, if you have any suggestions of how we can do that better, I'm open to that. I'm very open. So I will consider Mr. Yeah, Sen well, uh, I, President I, Underwood. I, I know that they, there's been a number of words that have been thrown around, uh, but, you know, the, the, the passion that is involved, and that is ab absolutely what should be energizing our, our response. And uh, this is, uh, uh, it's very clear in the wording and even in my own testimony that we're not celebrating anything. We're making note of it. We're commemorating it. It's going to happen. So for the first time, we're going to organize our own response. And if our own response is to put out a fleet of 300 uh, Sakman, then that should be our response. Whatever our response is, is under our management and control. That's all it is. And, you know, of course, people are going to have different uh, opinions about how to proceed with that. But, you know, 500 years of history is 500 years of history. And so this, uh, this, the, the, the idea of uh, study and research and energizing if you can envision that for maybe a year in advance or two years in advance or even the year afterwards, that thousands of children will think about the Chamorro people and their condition in ways in which it has been threatened and in ways in which it's because this event provides that opportunity for it. If we can envision taking our, our celebratory exhibits to museums around the world, so that others can understand it. That's what is envisioned in here. Of course the passion is strong. Of course the emotion is strong. 
Of course, it's, it's, it's a very powerful uh, and dispiriting story. Uh, but Magellan's visit itself affords the opportunity to reflect on that and to have the opportunity to formulate a response which gives the island dignity. And that's all it is. And, and of course, people are going to uh, say what they... And, and I'm, I'm hoping the commission, the way it's structured, certainly is going to be open to uh, different points of view. No one is, and as least as I know of, no one is getting paid. No one is going to make money on this. Uh, it's all a kind of a labor of love and an opportunity that is going to present itself in order to put Guam in a new light, in light of uh, this uh, event, which happened. Uh, and that's, that's what we're doing. So there's no, there's no word here for celebrating. There's no statues being built. There's nothing like that. It's just commemorating and using it as an opportunity, I think, to reflect upon a number of relationships and to reflect on our own history in very new and novel ways, uh, rather than letting other people control it. Because it's going to be managed by other people. So how do we best manage it ourselves? Well, of course, we form a commission. I don't know how else you can do it. I, I'm, you know, I'm open to suggestion. Maybe divine intervention will uh, figure out a way to do it. But, you know, in the wisdom of the uh, people of Guam and in the wisdom of the Guam legislature, you create a broad-based commission and that's what you've done, and, or that's what's being proposed. So I salute it. I have no, uh, you know, I understand the passion. I understand the passion of Mr. Laguatnia. Uh, and I understand the hurt understand the rage that it comes that comes from it i understand that rage but do i want rage to constantly consume me or do i want to turn rage into an opportunity to broaden a base and broaden thinking and empower future generations that's what we're confronted with that's that well i'm not we're not celebrating well, no, I'm going to ask the comment so run. It's the comment Okay, so. it's all right. Leave it at them. No, but they're coming no, here. No. no, they're coming here. Well, That's what I'm trying to tell you. No. No. They're well, coming then, here and they're involving the United States Navy in their agreement as to what they're going to do here. And so all we're trying to do is have an impact on that. We're We'll try. We're going to consider what you're saying. I mean, I, I understand. So I'm, I'm going to take one more testimony, and then, and then um, we'll consider everything, Mr. Laguatnia. We're going Senator Cristobal. Um, Buenas de Nafadai, Speaker Rector Lahi. I appear on behalf of myself today. I am Hope Alvarez Cristobal, a former senator in history of Guam adjunct professor at the University of Guam. As well, I am the author of the Guam Commission on Decolonization for the Implementation and Exercise of the Right of Chamorro Self-Determination, along with the Chamorro Registry, among other important pieces of legislation. I am currently the chairwoman of Ikumishon Ifino Chamorro, Zanifina Nagani Historia, Zaninilala Itautautano. I come here today to present testimony on Bill 346-34-COR, an act to establish the Inetnon Studio ni Umali'i Zanumafana Itautauhizu Zanitautautano Commission. As we near 500 years from 1521 to 2021, from the time the Portuguese, Ferdinand Magellan, first arrived in the Marianas from San Lucar de Barameda in Spain, scholars and students of history see opportunity to generate academic or scholarly material of a 16th century expedition that is now viewed as having lasting impact, whether non-contentious as mainstream historiography goes or quite offensive as counter-canonical historiography may depict or some other bland historical account. We ask ourselves, how do we proceed with such a in a studio, in a, in a studio or commemoration? There are many exciting discoveries for students of history. 
these thoughts run, um, run through my mind about our people's own encounter with Magellanis in 1521, about his so-called discovery of our island home. As a member of the Political Status Education Coordinating Commission, mandated by Public Law 20-99 and 21-136, I recall the very first book that was written by Arlena Santos Potts for the Haleta series aimed at elementary school students. Arlena was able to frame this topic from the perspective of our people, of one standing on the shoreline looking out at the vast Pacific Ocean, named by Magellanis himself, and watching his ships come into Umatak Bay. Why was Magellanis so violent? This is another thought. He came with his naval ships and fully armed mercenaries. He was an experienced warrior. He was prepared to control the natives. He had just participated in sacking the port of Goa, India, killing hundreds and hundreds of people there. Upon his arrival here, he sent his soldiers into Umatak and he killed seven elderly people who were then disemboweled and their entrails eaten by his starving crew. Third, shall we study the exploitations that follow Magellanus' discovery of lands while he was attempting to find another route to India? Fourth, there is no doubt that our history of colonization began with Magellanus' arrival. The Haleta series attempted to cover broad areas of history and broad interpretations of that history. I think in the end, that commission accomplished some short-term objectives but perhaps this in an on a studio can propel a more decolonizing narrative or at the least not ignore the significant negative impacts of Magellanus' unplanned but well-prepared circumnavigation making landfall in Guam and other native island homes. Our whole worldview of the sciences, architecture, astronomy, navigation, geography, and education, for example, have been replaced. There must be room made for us to develop. Would this provide that opportunity? Spain says, what a great guy. He provided Legazpi a map to the Marianas. We say, what? He ripped our ancestors off. He stole our land. His voyage assured the continued exploitation of the nature of native peoples, the stealing of our lands. Archmoro warriors of the 17th century were right to persist in the struggle for freedom for 28 years. Their resistance and response to continued colonization, their commitment to the restoration of Chamorro sovereignty must be supported and truly righted by our 21st century scholars and academics. By doing so, we reject this endless colonialism and militarism as its tool. Today, we strive to give meaning to our lives through the work on decolonization and the exercise of our human right to self-determination. This narrative must be our immediate goal in scholarly activity until the day we are set free. In 1974, Guam switched from Magellan Day to Discovery Day. Did that change our narrative? How must we make sure the tomorrow narrative is included in the current narratives? Other thoughts include, how do we rekindle our relationship with Spain? Should we view the 500 year of Magellanus' landfall on Guam as a celebration? Should we celebrate our people that fought back? The women who tore out their hair to demonstrate their grief about the 1521 killings? Should our participation in scholarly activity lead to ways of restorative justice and the well-being of our people today, the fulfillment of our people's aspirations for decolonization? Pope John Paul II apologized for the killing of indigenous peoples, non-Christians, and the use of violence against them. Perhaps this will lead to our colonizers admitting wrongdoing against the Chamorro people. Spain certainly has not done so. America hasn't even thought of it. Japan, well, America forgave them and even rebuilt their bombed out cities. 
Today, yesterday, as of yesterday, we get 30, 32 people finally receiving $10,000 each for World War II atrocities. To date, the Chamorro people have never signed any treaties. There has never been any respect. 500 years later, there are still outstanding issues. Magellanes began the assault on Chamorro sovereignty. Our countries are part, other countries are part of this commemoration, will enhance their respective sovereignty while we continue to languish. I can't help but feel that this should be a major scholarly topic to be encouraged by our participation, that we must continue to enlighten and give our people hope. Let us not be confused as to the reason for this commission. There is real possibility that our participation in Magellanus' anniversary of arrival here can be misconstrued and that it will dis destroy the narrative that we have built. Its purpose must be very clear. Sidus Masi for hearing my testimony this afternoon. Sidus Masi, maybe, maybe um, I don't know if we can make the purpose clearer. That would, that would, you know, um, maybe get all of the community to to join. So we'll work on it, and I'm, I'm open to suggestion. But I, I agree. In my mind, the intent is clear, and if it was me responding on this commission as a member, I know what I would want. And uh, so I would just, we're just trying to ensure that no one else tells our history anymore, especially on this big global opportunity. I think that, that we get out there and say what, what we want to say. But um, all right, if there's no other testimony, Senator? I just want to thank everyone for their testimony. I, I am too a little bit conflicted about this bill. I, I share some of the similar sentiments of uh, uh, Mr. Laguania and Senator Cristobal, but I also understand the perspective of uh, integral cooperation that the university is promoting. I do have a question. Uh, Dr. Bavaco, you, you mentioned I, briefly that you part partook in a meeting that involved this specific topic. I just want to know how did this even uh, become an agenda part of our policy to, to address? Where did this, who pushed this commemoration forward? So Underwood would be the best one to sort of speak on that because uh, there was a, a conference held in, in Spain in March of this year and it was organized by the Spanish Navy and it was supposed to kind of kick off their proceedings. And so people were invited from all of the different places that Magellan stopped at. And so uh, President Underwood was invited, but he was unable to attend, so he sent me instead. Yeah, it's a kind of a long story, but you know, it was a, seen as a naval conference. And uh, of course, it had no, uh, no opportunity for uh, Guam to participate, but uh, the, uh, the, one of the admirals there, one of the Spanish admirals, uh, knew Admiral Peter Gumatauto, and he asked Peter Gumatauto about it. And then Admiral, uh, Admiral Gumatauto uh, coordinated with me and said uh, that I could go, but I didn't. I didn't I, it was, you know, pretty quick, so I thought it would be really uh, an interesting view to send someone like Dr. Bivakwa to that meeting. And, and so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad he went because that's exactly where uh, we need to uh, present our ideas. And I, I, I trust he did a good job. And from that, they've, uh, you know, they've, they're, they're doing other things. Of course, the Spanish government has uh, since changed. They had a political turnover. So there's a few things that are going on, but uh, that and then the other part of it too is that when I went to Spain is I tried to uh, alert the uh, US government about it so I went to the US Embassy uh, in uh, in Madrid to tell them that Guam was likely to uh, organize their own uh, response and their own uh, ideas on how to deal with this visit so that's basically I'm just concerned that uh 
This is, appears to be a very divisive, divisive topic. I'm just concerned, uh, is this, this the intent of this, uh, not the commission, but this commemoration, the intent that Spain is looking towards to glorify uh, their conquests? Well, of course it is. Of, of course it is, because they're, they're interpreting it differently. So in my conversations with Spanish officials, they would say things like, uh, they would make a comparison that this is equivalent to the first step of globalization and on landing on the moon. And then I would say, well, the only difference between this and landing on the moon is there's no people on the moon, but you did something to people here. And that's the opportunity that we're going to have to tell our story. And that's, that's all it is now. In the, whole, in the whole flow of events, I don't know how big an impact we'll make, but it certainly make an impact for ourselves, if nothing else. And that's really the, 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 uh, the uh, it, it's not the, the, the topic, of course, encourages a lot of emotion, but I think the whole idea of having an opportunity for people to get involved and display their talent and display their pride so, you know, I, even, even in, the, in this context, we had a discussion with the, uh, uh, of course, it's a kind of a changed environment now in Saipan, but there's a young man over there who's organizing, uh, you know, what he calls 300 canoes, uh, the 300 yeah. sails. Mm -hmm. So, trying to figure out, now, what kind of an impact would it be if you get a 70-foot uh, ship kind of coming around the corner and it's met by 300 vessels? Mm -hmm. See, that's the impact. That's, that's what we can do. And that's, what, that's how we have the opportunity uh, to tell our story. Because it's going to be a time uh, that... Uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, the, all those ideas about apologies and all the ideas, all those are, are, are ripe for conversation. But they won't be ripe for conversation without an instrumentality to make that happen. And so you're fashioning in this legislation an instrumentality to make that possible. Yeah. I just, just don't want it to look like the Chamorro people are ignorant in this legislation. Well, of for, course that not. That will be I, the I, instrumentality I, of it. Yeah. No, well, the, that, so. that's, exactly why, that's exactly why I sent Miguel. That's just exactly the, why we're, we're trying to uh, interact with them in order to make the case. And, 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 and so this... It, it, it's also kind of, uh, just, just so that we understand, the, the, the Spanish researchers themselves are pretty divided on this issue. It's not like they're all 100% looking at it this way. I talked to researchers at the uh, Museum of Anthropology, the Museum of the Americas, who have a very different view, a view that most people in this room would find great comfort with about how to portray this. So it's not, a, it's not just a, an example of yet another a kind of colonial encounter. And, and, and uh, so I, I think that uh, the, uh, the moment, the moment will come. And that moment, uh, I hope and I, I trust that we'll, we'll display who we are in the most uh, engaging and strong way possible. Just to, to add on to what uh, President Underwood has said, this is, in, in a way, we were, we were very lucky for the Pete Gumatautau connection, because if it hadn't happened, then no one from Guam would have been invited, and, the, and their plans for their 500-year anniversary would have happened with the U.S. State Department pre representing Guam, and they wouldn't have represented Guam. They would have probably brought the Gov, Gov Guam in at the very end, after they had already made their plans with the U.S. Navy for what they wanted to do. And so, by by getting out ahead of the game several years early, by establishing a commission, you create a body which the parties have to work with as they deal with their commemoration activities. And so by, by sort of by organizing ourselves and ensuring that the Chamorro side is told, um, we put ourselves in a better position. If you are a colony, if, if you don't have a status, if there's no formal relationships, then you have to work to create the relationship. And in this instance, the gray area benefits us because we can push and assert ourselves. You have to do it early enough and you have to be willing to sort of put yourself out there. But I can tell you that if we didn't have a commission like this, then the commemoration would look completely different. 
and we would be coming late into the game and we wouldn't be able to craft it in any, any particular way. And so I definitely think, and, and just one of the things that I want to point out in terms of the name of it, I like the name of it because it says umafana and umadli'i, which refers to a much more way of interacting with each other. It's not, it doesn't use the word sodda, it doesn't use the word discubri or faktsa'i or anything like that. But it refers to this idea that when the insiders and the outsiders met, it was on an equal playing field, right? Because Chamorros traditionally like to express that when you meet somebody, it's not I met her, we met each other. And so I do appreciate that even in the, the naming of the bill, that it is starting from the perspective of that Chamorros and Spaniards or Portuguese should be on an equal level in terms of how this commemoration is carried out, not sort of the traditional way of one finds the other. I would like to add that in the Philippines, the discussion, because I went on the internet, and uh, there's a whole bunch of things happening, and the same thing is happening there as here. There are some writers that are uh, using this event as a way to highlight their own nationalism and how Magellan is the villain in their nationalism movement and uh, you know, to get the people unified around that issue. But there are some writers that are hailing uh, the fact that uh, he provided this you know, opportunity to uh, engage with other lands through the mapping of the Philippines. Um, and so um, that's different though, because you know, they're talking about their sovereignty mm -hmm. and we don't have that. He, you know, we're still uh, suffering the fact that uh, we've lost our sovereignty in, since Magellan's arrival. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you all for your testimony. I, I very much appreciate it. We're going to move on on the agenda to bill number 344, and I want to thank all of you who have been waiting to testify on this and the next item on our agenda. Bill number 344 is an act to add a new chapter 51 to title 15 of the Guam Code annotated relative to expediting distribution of Guam World War II claims to awardees who die before receiving the award. If I could please invite the Chief Justice to join us and thank you for, for your patience, Madam Justice, and uh, Kathy Goldwe from the Public Defender's Office. And if there's anyone else who wishes to testify on this bill, um, I'm going to introduce the bill very briefly. The Guam World War II Loyalty Recognition Act, Title 17, Public Law 114-328, signed on December 23, 2016, authorized the Foreign Claims Settlement Commission to conduct a supplemental war claims compensation program for victims and survivors of the attack and occupation of Guam during World War II. The act covers claims for death, rape, personal injury, severe personal injury, forced labor, forced march, internment, and hiding to evade internment. Approximately 3,656 World War II survivors and their families from Guam have filed war claims with the FCSC and are awaiting the final decisions. Payments for compensation are based on what was endured, uh, $15,000 for rape or severe personal injury, $12,000 for forced labor or personal injury, 10000 for forced march internment or hiding to evade, and 25000 to be distributed to living descendants of individuals killed during the occupation. My office and I provided assistance to some war survivors and or their families in completing the applications for compensation. One of those survivors that we assisted in Marizzo passed away a few months ago, which was the impetus for this legislation. We have watched numerous members of this greatest generation pass on before seeing any compensation for the hardships that they experienced during the war. They deserve all the help that we can offer them and their families. And although we can't help those that Congress already excluded, those were the war survivors that passed away before December 23, 2016, we can do our best for those who were allowed to submit a claim. It's my hope that this bill can shorten the weight and the cost for the families of any war claims applicants who die before receiving their award. The bill would streamline the distribution of war claims awards for survivor awardees. It would ensure that families or the heirs 
of these survivors, uh, I mean, of, of the eligible war claimants, can obtain the recipient's award expeditiously and at minimum cost. The bill would remove the requirement for a, an, an all-out probate hearing, remove the court costs, and cap attorney's fees at no more than $300 if necessary, but it would also direct that the Public Defender Service Corporation assist these claimants' families in this process. In a pub Pacific Daily News article yesterday, the Foreign Claims Settlement Commission uh, issued final decisions for 32 war claims for $10,000 each on October 9. After the commission approves, the war claims payment amounts will be forwarded to the Department of Treasury for processing. Chief Justice, um, please, if you could present your testimony. Thank you again. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we have submitted written testimony. My primary reason to be here today is to answer any questions. I would like to remind those of you that have a long memory, um, a similar process was used when the land claims were paid from the district court, I believe in the late 80s or early 90s, and that went well, and I, I think this, this would also um, be an appropriate way to, to handle those anticipated payments coming in. But I, I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Gogui? Hafadeh, Madam Speaker, Therese Terlahi, Chairperson of Justice and Culture, and Vice Chairperson Talina Nelson. We want to thank you for the opportunity to provide testimony on behalf of our Executive Director, Stephen Hattori, with the Public Defender Service Corporation on Bill 344-34. We would like to begin by thanking the committee for the opportunity to test testify in favor of Bill 344. We are at a historic point in the administration of the World War II claims for our Manamku. The application process has occurred through the help of many. Our office took an active role in the process as we assisted many of our Manamku notarizing and even helping out filling out the forms for our elderly. Since the payment is now expected to take a few years, this piece of legislation will ensure that our Manamku need not wait longer than they have in order to get the compensation, uh, whether it's fair or not, that they long deserve. This expedited process will ensure that the estates of these claimants who die before receiving the award will receive the award in a timely and cost-effective manner. We are the Public Defender Service Corporation. We strive to serve those in our community who need legal service yet cannot afford them. We will accept the challenge in assisting our World War II survivors and estates so that they may obtain their long overdue distribution in a timely manner. Thank you, Speaker Terlahi and Vice Chair Nelson for introducing, I'm sorry, Speaker Terlahi for introducing the measure to facilitate the distribution of World War II claims. We at the Public Defender Service Corporation, with service as our middle name, are committed to providing whatever legal assistance is ne necessary for the Manamco of Guam. Sijus Masi. Sijus Masi. Senator, did you have any questions? No, I just wanted to say thank you very much to the judici judiciary and the public uh, defender's office for their support on this bill and ensuring that um, the war claims are, uh, that are handled in a timely and efficient manner with minimal cost because they're basically receiving pennies for the suffering that they've experienced. And I'd like to thank you, Speaker, for introducing this measure to help our Manomko and those that have survived the World War II. Thank you. My boss here, Chief Justice Merriman, reminded me to advise um, the legislature that we will waive any fee. We've never charged for any of our notaries and will continue to, to assist in any way we possibly can. And we've had such a great relationship with the legislature. And you folks call us and say, we need you. We're there. And so we'll continue with the outreach that we had with the congresswoman as well as the legislature in making this happen. Yes, and I want to thank your office also for, for actually being present at several outreaches. One was sponsored by Independent Guahan up at UOG, and I know that your office was there helping to process claimants, helping to notarize, and that we have looked around for notaries, and we are 
you know, uh, in an urgent situation for those claimants and that you have always answered and you have been willing to even come outside to the car if necessary for the Manamku and I, I very much appreciate that. And so please thank all your staff and, your, and the, um, Mr. Tori and you, of course, who are organizing this. And Chief Justice, thank you, because I know that the public defender is under your purview, and I want to thank you for your, your testimony today, and especially your insight as to the land claims process, because that's, uh, I was looking at that as also the pattern of how we could do this, and so I appreciate your testimony and for your being here today. I, I might add that we got an email from the Bureau of Budget and Management Research regarding a cost impact to the court. Uh, we don't believe there will be any need to, um, although we still have our general request for a new judge, uh, we don't see this as uh, impacting uh, the budget or causing increased costs to the court. Thank you. That's great to hear. Thank you very much. All right, thank you all again for your patience. Um, uh, the final item on our agenda is the confirmation of Dr. Mike Bivakwa to the Kaha Board, the Council on the Arts and Humanities Agency. And Kaha is currently under the direction of the Department of Chamorro Affairs, Mr. Johnny Sablan, the director. Thank you for being here. And um, uh, if I would ask you to testify first. Thank you. Oh, if I could, just before um, that, sorry. I'd just like to very, very quickly um, just describe what the requirements are for this Kaha board. And it says that there shall be 13 members, 12 of whom are appointed by the governor with the advice and consent of the legislature. Um, Mr. Vivac was nominated as a general member, uh, selected at large, who have recognized the professional interests and experience, who have recognized professional interests and experience in, or who are widely known for their interests in the arts and humanities. While serving in office, no member of the governing board or any of its committees, panels, or advisory groups shall be eligible to receive a grant, loan, or other form of assistance from CAHA. We know that CAHA gives artists these grants, so I know that it's something that you have to sacrifice to be on this board. CAHA meets at least monthly, more often if necessary, and quorum consists of a majority of members duly appointed and qualified. The board's responsible for the budget of CAHA, and the employees are supposed to answer to you, including the director. And uh, the board is authorized to appoint committees, panels, commissions. They are also responsible to apply for, receive, and disperse funds from the National Endowment for the Arts and Humanities, some on behalf of Guam to apply for and accept and expand any gifts, donations, or requests on behalf of Guam, also for the arts. All right, Mr. S Mr. Sablan. Buenas and half a day, uh, Madam Speaker and Vice Speaker. Guao si Senor Zani Sablan, he must get here to the Department of Kaha Guinahan Samoro, and also oversees a Kaha Guinahan Zan Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities. So, as as the Executive Director, I come before you to ask for a, a quick confirmation for Dr. Michael uh, Lohan Buvakia. He had served uh, in the past, uh, when I first came in in 2016, uh, he was already on board uh, as a board member and I was uh, very uh, uh, impressed with his contribution and his uh, unselfish uh, approach to helping uh, others in the artistic arts and humanities of uh, especially in the traditional uh, arts so we really um, welcome that he accepted this uh, nomination again and and i know that uh, he will help our board 
make the right decisions and and uh, to help and contribute for uh, the arts and humanities in East Linguahan. So we ask again to um, uh, ask the senators for a quick approval and confirmation for Dr. Michael Lohan Bovakia. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sablon, can I just ask you right away, how many members do you have right now? Um, we have six. Six out of six. 13? Yes. Uh, All right. And, um, okay. And so I want to acknowledge also for the record that Deputy Director Joyce Bamba of CAHA submitted written testimony in support mm -hmm. and that Francis Guerrero, another member of CAHA, also submitted testimony, mm -hmm. a written testimony in support. All right, Dr. Underwood. Uh, buenas tardes, good afternoon. Um, I'm here to testify on behalf of uh, Dr. Miguel Bebacua to be a member of CAHA. Now, uh, many, many years ago, maybe 35, 40 years ago, it's been quite a long time, um, I was asked to participate in a uh, uh, needs assessment on CAHA. What kind of art did they need to focus on? So I said they need to focus on three kinds of art. Native art, tomorrow art, and indigenous art. <laughs> I haven't changed my mind since then. <laughs> so the, the, the point being that, uh, of course, Dr. Bivakwa brings that perspective, but there's something more remarkable about uh, Dr. Bivakwa that, you know, maybe a handful of people know about, and I'm not trying to embarrass him here, but he, he literally has his hand into everything. He's an artist, and he's a humanist, and he's a language expert, and he knows about uh, traditional art of blacksmithing. And, uh, you know, one time I saw a painting of my aunt, my father's sister, uh, uh, sister, uh, uh, sister Ines, Sister Mary Ines. And, uh, you know, I just thought it kind of remarkable because she was the first Chamorro nun that someone would actually paint them. And I found out he was the one who painted that. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it demonstrates that. Uh, and, and I asked him also to do a painting of my mother. Uh, he, he has an artistic sense and he has a committed uh, social point of view and he has, uh, he's a wonderfully intelligent human being who does a number of different things. Now, of course, that clearly merits membership on the Kaha board and several other things in life on Guam, but I just wanted to say that I, I have uh, the, the, the confidence in him and his level of commitment and his uh, good sense, which is also sometimes um, not in abundant supply in advocacy. <laughs> so I've been an advocate for different things over the years, and uh, so is he, and he goes off on a lot of different things, and I'm uh, constantly amazed at his energy. But the one thing that he does possess is he possesses good sense. He knows, you know, knows how to turn it on, and he knows, uh, you know, and he knows how to be persistent and consistent. So I think that uh, he wonderfully deserves this, and I hope you uh, uh, approve his uh, nomination quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bivakwa. Sidus <laughs> Rossing. I don't know. I, it's always so hard to follow Robert Underwood. <laughs> um, let's see. But uh, I do have a prepared statement, and I can just submit it as part of the record. Um, but I do want to just uh, acknowledge that um, CAHA is, has always been very important to me. Um, I've received several grants through CAHA. Um, I love attending my, f the first art shows that I was ever in were in the Two Lovers Point Gallery uh, that Kaha had before, um, and also because of my grandfather, who was a cultural master recognized through Kaha, and so um, I'm always happy to, to sort of support them, and part of the perspective on that is because um, at the University of Guam, we get a lot of people who want to be business majors, accounting majors, public admin, criminal justice majors, nursing majors, but we get fewer and fewer who want to be sort of creative majors, you know, 
Um, and a lot of that is because of the culture of their families. A lot of that is because of the perception that artists starve for their art. Um, but for me, I always think that um, the arts and the culture are whatever metaphor you want to use. They're the flavor of life. They're the spirit of life. They're the sort of the beating heart. And without them, without sufficient support for arts and culture, there is no reason to sort of go to your high paying job with the major that sort of will put food on your table. And so for me, um, promoting the arts and creating a greater sense of consciousness of the arts amongst our own community and using arts and humanities to represent ourselves to the rest of the world is very important. This is very much in line with um, uh, the, the bill that was bis discussed previously. If you imagine that the 500 year anniversary will be like a mini fest pack for us. So the eyes will turn to Guam and the arts that we have to share, the way that we sort of, if we support those who express in exciting and interesting ways where we've come from and so on, we can captivate the imagination of others. We can build durable ties with them. But all of that comes down from supporting the arts. And so because as much as and so when people look at Guam from a difference, the arts shine more than anything else because that is sort of the color of the life. And so if they see Guam as being a dull place without culture, without anything sort of, without anything substantive to it in that regard, then it's easier to ignore it. It's easier to kind of write it off. And so I'm, I'm uh, grateful for the nomination and I'm happy to take any questions too. I want to thank you for your willingness to serve again um, on this board and I want to recognize that you are on you are very active in our community and I, I guess I want to just ask I read your resume but are you involved in any other government boards um, no all right okay no just, so. I'm on several nonprofit boards but no government right. boards um, oh ex the decolonization Commission I just oh. remembered that one so I'm, I don't think it, uh, it's, it's sort of a weird position because the, the task force has membership and sort of it switches and it can be any of the seven people that are recognized. So it's not, so I was never personally confirmed for okay. that. That's right. All right. Um, do you foresee any potential conflicts of interest in, if appointed to this board? And so as you mentioned, I won't be able to apply for sort of Kaha support um, at, while I'm on the board. And I do have uh, relatives, uh, siblings, for example, that are artists. And so I will need to recuse myself if any of my close relatives apply for a grant. And so I have done that in the past. I have done that in the past when sort of it has come up. All right. Okay. And I'm going to ask you this because you've served on this board before. And are, is there a, something that you have in mind that you could share with us that you are hoping that uh, like a goal or expectation for this Kaha board moving forward? Oh, well, so, the, so when I was on the board, we did have a larger sort of membership. We had a fuller board. Um, and I, I think there may have been some fest pack fatigue yeah. after that. <laughs> people wanted to go back to their lives. <laughs> but um, so one of the main things that would definitely need to be focused on is recruiting people and getting our membership up back up again. Um, and then in terms of, uh, and then one of the things that I, as I mentioned is focusing on those things which can be used to not just represent Guam here, but internationally as well. And so uh, if we look at other Pacific Islanders, um, other Pacific Islander groups, for example, writing, publications, short stories. That's one of the main things that a lot of islands define themselves as. And Kaha doesn't, uh, do, has yet to kind of engage a lot of writers. So usually it's visual arts that is supported, but then writing and publications is also something that can fall under that. Um, this is especially true if thinking to 2020 when the 500 year anniversary mm -hmm. comes. But so expanding that definition expanding those definitions and then getting more people. I think that Guam is an island that has lots of fantastic stories and lots of people that have stories to tell. And one of the great things about Kaha is that anybody, as long as they complete their application, they can sign up for a grant for a couple thousand dollars to get them paint so they can paint pictures, to, to support them while they go to Mark and do research. And it's such a fantastic opportunity. 
And so really wanting to get that to the community because people are always asking me at UOG, you know, can you write a book about my grandfather? And I say, mm -hmm. you, sh you can do that, you know, you can apply for a grant or, you know, I can show you where and, and mark and you can do the research yourself. But Kaha is a great place for empowering the community to create themselves. And I've always liked that about them. Thank you. And I want to thank you for your vision also going forward and tying this all into FESPAC. I think uh, it's very appropriate. I want to acknowledge the presence of the staff of Kaha who are here, Sherry Barcinas, Angie Taitagui, and Jackie Babas. They've been with Kaha for as long as I've known Kaha. So I want to thank you all for your work there and especially through FESPAC. I know that was a, a huge burden on you. And I, I want to say from my personal point of view that uh, uh, thank you. It, I thought uh, we were so proud to, to have that moment to show our artists off and uh, to celebrate art and, and, and each other. So thank you, Sizus Masi. And Sizus Masi, Dr. Bivakwa, and, and Mr. Sablan, thank you very much. This, this uh, hearing is concluded. Testimony can be submitted here to the Guam Congress building or to senatorterlahiguam.com for the next 10 days. It's 3.38 uh, p.m. Sitzos Masi.